Hello guys and hello from Kyiv, the heart of brave Ukraine. And no one in Ukraine is ready to give any of our temporarily occupied territories for any status, be it EU membership, NATO or whatever. Why? Because first of all, these are not just territories, these are people, their lives, their memories, their houses. And secondly, because we are really good at returning temporarily occupied territories back to Ukrainian home. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support my country, please subscribe and help us fight informational war. And my longtime friends, warmest greetings from Kyiv, check your subscription status, hit notification button. I'm very grateful for your friendly advice in comments too. And today I record a video that I love recording and we will talk about two of the Ukrainian territories that are very likely soon will return back home. Number one is a successful counter-offensive operation on the left bank of Dnipro river close to Kherson. Actually, I will remind you that Kherson was temporarily occupied at the start of Russian invasion and then returned back home. There are many heartwarming videos how Ukrainian soldiers were met there and many people went through a really difficult period were uh, prosecuted, they were hiding their telephones and everything, they were going out on strikes and protests, by the way, feel the difference, no one in Russia protests and Ukrainians were brave enough to go out on the streets of Kherson knowing that the city is occupied and the tanks surround the square. So when Kherson returned back to Ukraine, it was a very good signal that we are on the way to our victory and Russians had nothing to say to the people, so their propaganda failed and they said it was just like a gesture of goodwill or something. Uh, but of course, it was their failure and a total opposition of Ukrainian people. But uh, Territory, some territory of Kherson region is still under occupation. This is our pain, this is our tragedy because uh, people are tortured, people are killed, uh, children are evacuated, they constantly threat to commit various ecocides and other troubles. Well, you know, Russia is evil and subscribe to fight against this evil. And uh, now, for a long period of time, Russian troops were staying on the left bank of Dnipro river using this position to simply terrorize the city, hitting it with missiles, bombing it and just like erasing it. But uh, Ukrainian armed forces are working hard and according to the Institute of War, not just like Ukrainian institution, but the international one, there are signs that since the mid of October, Ukrainian troops were slowly moving to the left bank temporarily occupied and thus performing uh, fights for more and more Ukrainian villages. Close to one battalion, which is like 300 people are for sure there with uh, various military vehicles. And I think this is a beautiful beginning of the liberation of the left bank of Ukraine in Kherson region. Russian uh, propaganda perhaps is working how to explain another good gesture in that area, I don't mind. They can show as many good gestures as possible to leave all the territory of Ukraine, returning us back to 1991 borders. And Donetsk was the city occupied in 2014 together with Luhansk and Crimea. And I believe that weak Ukrainian reaction and weak global reaction actually inspired Putin, gave him green light. Once again, that is why it's so important for us now to win this war, because if uh, we fail or if we start negotiating something, this will give inspiration not only to Putin, but many similar evil regimes. And you see, they are very active at the moment. So Donetsk was occupied since 2014. Before that, it was a big industrial city, uh, lots of stadiums. It was one of the soccer capitals of Ukraine, business capitals. Like the city had a good life, but now it is deteriorating as all Russian cities actually. And uh, Donetsk is often used for the preparation of uh, Russian soldiers and 
perhaps with HIMARS, Ukrainian soldiers were able to destroy the center of uh, drone operators uh, <clears throat> training. So they have a center where they train uh, Russian soldiers to use drones and to shoot Ukrainians, Ukrainian territories and so on. Moreover, it seems like this center is also used to uh, produce some of them. These are not very big drones, but spy drones and small attacking drones. And this building was destroyed together with perhaps operators of drones and the technologies they were using. But um, Russians always have a choice. They can leave uh, Ukraine, they can go back to Russia and leave there. I cannot say happily because you cannot live happily in Russia. Or they can do something good and actually walk with all of their weapons and tanks in the direction of Kremlin, liberating Russia from Putin's regime. But both you and me know they will never do it, so it is the task of Ukraine and allies to fight against that. And we see that slowly but very confidently we retain more and more of Ukrainian territories. Actually, Kherson was the only regional center they managed to occupy at the beginning of uh, this full-scale invasion and it returned back to Ukraine. The same way soon we will return Crimea that is all the time on fire and Donetsk and Luhansk will be liberated too. And I believe soon you will be able to come and see Kyiv, which is very beautiful, and to other cities, Donetsk and Luhansk and Crimea, potentially build something, develop something, because Ukraine is a very hospitable, very open country. And if we become members of the EU, because rumors are not bad, and hopefully we will start the procedure of negotiations. I know, I know it's not for tomorrow, but the direction is uh, correct. So we definitely need your support and conversation uh, about Ukraine. Hopefully, uh, we will have our live stream this Saturday from Kyiv. As I'm working here on a documentary project, you were asking me, I can tell you more during our stream, but this is a six-series documentary about Russian propaganda and how dangerous it is for the state Ukrainian television that I'm doing with my uh, friends. I did not manage to film you a lot, but I am trying to collect beautiful places and subscribe to my Instagram because I've shared there a lot of my Saint Sophia experience. This is a beautiful old cathedral, like it has more than a thousand years that was built in the heart of Kievan Rus. Also, good news, we launch new Christmas collection in our merch shop. Go check it. These are beautiful presents because, first of all, they remind Ukraine about Ukraine. They share our cultural heritage and they help you speak about us, which is important. But also, they are very beautiful. Our designer did his best, taking into account that there are some sweaters that need knitting and you will need more time to get them. So check them if you like and let me know if you choose something. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my uh, patrons. I value that a lot. Thank you for your comments. They help us fight Russian trolls that were super active on the channel. Um, Thank you for joining my Discord, threads, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm really active there. But most importantly, thank you for your love, support, and understanding of Ukraine. Believe me, we can win this war. We will win this war. We have to remain united. And of course, we need Atacams and HIMARS. Thank you. Slava Ukraini.